the Earth's greatest threat, the Sun and its coronal mass ejections. This is imminent because we're having them coming in at us. They started three days ago and we had a massive earthquake in Papua New Guinea and the Earth is still ringing like a bell from that earthquake. And uh, of course the aftershocks of that earthquake. Let's hope that's the end of it and that we won't have a bigger one there. Uh, this is concerning what NASA has found concerning our vulnerability to the sun's storms, the solar storms, the solar flares when they're ejected from the sun facing towards us, known as coronal mass ejections, or space weather is what we study when we uh, look into this. Space weather today tells us that we have an increase of geomagnetic storms. NOAA forecasters boosted the odds of geomagnetic storms this week to 75% because a series of CMEs are approaching Earth. The action begins May 15th, today, when the first CME is expected to arrive and could continue through May 17th, when we're going to have another one, 17th and 18th, as additional CMEs follow. Storm levels will almost certainly reach category G1 minor with isolated periods of G2 moderate storming as well. And the Northern Lights, the uh, Aurora Borealis could cross the US Canadian border and uh, uh, we'll, we will see the uh, nights ahead that we will have them going all the way down. The Auroras, the Northern Lights will be seen all the way down to Wyoming. And now, what does this mean? For Earth. The planet source of life can also devastate modern society. This is by Eric McLam on ecology. With NASA's information, we know that the Sun is a nuclear furnace and it's 93 million miles from us, and the planet's primary source of life. It's also the most destructive force that the Earth faces. Imminently, that is. Uh, besides other factors that we have, we may have other uh, destructive forces, for example, celestial bodies that may be approaching Earth. Now, this is, uh, the Sun is, of course, is the heart of our solar system, and the warm, life-giving nuclear fact factory that we call the Sun is, of course, essential to all life as we know it. Yet it's millions of times more violent and destructive than any force our planet faces. This is the same sun that eradicated the atmosphere on Mars four billion years ago when that planet lost its magnetic field. Let's keep that in mind. That's why when you see the video just previous to this one, it has to do with a scientist warning that Earth faces catastrophe if we do not do something to reinforce our Earth's magnetic field, our magnetosphere. What can we do? That's the thing. We don't have the technology at this point of our advancement, development, to do, to do anything. It's just man against nature. So uh, Mars, they believe, lost that had an atmosphere and lost it due to a solar storm that wiped it out. Earth sits much closer to the Sun than Mars does and therefore it's more intensely subjected to the Sun's power. Not only does the Sun generate temperatures on its surface over 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit or five and a half thousand degrees Celsius, but its core temperature is over 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. This it is at the center of our sun where this where its fuel, its hydrogen, fuses to create helium in a nuclear fusion process, like the plutonium atomic bomb that was used at the end of World War II, and is the ultimate source of its fierce energy in the form of light, heat, and radiation. And this is process. Uh, why life thrives on our planet, but it's also why life is impossible on others and poses dangers to us as well on Earth. 
Now we live on a Goldilocks zone of life, it seems. The key to life on Earth is that it is in what the scientists call the sitting in the Goldilocks zone. It's not too close to the sun and it's not too far away. Its average distance from the sun is just under 93 million miles or 150 million kilometers. It's just the right place for Earth to create optimum conditions of life. Now, while the sun constantly blankets Earth with its warm uh, energy, it also emits harmful radiation. Most of the harmful rays are in the form of ultraviolet radiation, and that's what causes our sunburns, for example. But they also include X-rays, an extremely dangerous, worse gamma rays, gamma radiation. While some of these rays actually make it to Earth's surface, Earth's atmosphere, including the magnetosphere, the uh, magnetic shield, serves to absorb and shield most of these harmful rays from life and uh, above the surface while also retaining life-sustaining levels of the sun, warmth, and energy. These normal processes and relationships evolved and existed here on Earth formed about four and a half billion years ago, scientists believe. But with the sun's constant stream of heat and energy comes an overwhelming phenomenon that is so powerful that it can totally wipe out all possibility of life on Earth, just as it did on the planet Mars. And it would be, uh, whatever, not for the Earth's magnetic field, which shields our planet's surface from these massive solar occurrences. They have the power of a billion hydrogen bombs. Coronal mass ejections, or CMEs as we know them, are violent ejections of solar gas and plasma and electromagnetic radiation that can propel more than 10 billion tons of solar material outwards from the sun's atmosphere with the power of over a billion hydrogen bombs. And this is what China's State Key Laboratory of Space Weather and University of California at Berkeley space sciences laboratory tell us. They can extend billions of miles into space and once jettisoned from the sun's hold they can accelerate to several million miles per hour and can reach Earth within one to three days as we see now. These CMEs uh, that are reaching us today started from the sun three days ago. In other words 72 hours at the most. So CMEs erupting out from space uh, could be about 900 miles per second and uh, reaching days three days after. CMEs can be several thousand times larger than Earth itself, similar to what we see in uh, the image given to us by NASA, as you can see here. So the more powerful CMEs travel much faster and are the most destructive. They can also be billions of times larger than the Earth itself. When a massive CME reaches the distance of Earth's orbit around the Sun, they can be well over 45 million miles in diameter, about half the distance between Earth and the Sun, and nearly 6,000 times larger than Earth's diameter. Can you imagine? 6,000 times larger than the width of the Earth. CMEs are huge events. This is what Dr. Jeffrey Newark, solar physics scientist in NASA's Heliophysics Division says. They have been hitting Earth since it formed and will continue to hit our planet. Every few weeks a CME hits our planet but they have been small and have relative little impact. But most CMEs that hit the Earth do not make direct impact. It's the immense coronal mass ejection that hits Earth head-on that would spell major trouble for modern society's way of life, even today. The smaller CME events shut down satellites and global communication systems as well as interrupt airline control and electrical power grids. But a massive CME that hits Earth directly would be exponentially more dangerous. Most CMEs 
rocket harmlessly through space, but about 30 of them hit Earth every year, with most of them skimming off the planet's atmosphere, shaving off at a, at a tangent. A direct hit from a very large CME is a one in a hundred year event. This is according to the solar research at NASA and the European Space Agency. A direct hit would be about one every 100 years. The low probability, but possible at any time, that it can happen. That's why the uh, previous video, the scientist says we have to do something to reinforce our magnetic shield. It's just a matter of time. Quote, probability of a massive CME directly hitting Earth is pretty low, but still it could happen at any time, is what Dr. Newark says. But if and when a CME hits Earth, Earth head-on, he says, the result could be catastrophic to modern human society. The um, frequencies of CME varies according to solar activity, as we know. The sun goes through various cycles, which have an average duration of about 11 years. And at the height of each cycle, two or three CMEs are generated every day. Whereas the low end of the cycle, there is an occurrence about one per week. Now, right now, we are about to... Uh, peak solar cycle, Dr. Newark says, but our frequency of CMEs does not mean one can hit the Earth directly at any time. Not only could the cost of such a direct hit by a massive CME range into the trillions of dollars worth of damage being done, but it would set back the progress of society many years. The entire technology infrastructure on which human life has become totally dependent from electricity and power generation to communications, business transactions, healthcare, commerce, agriculture, and other critical infrastructures of modern society would be decimated and taken years to recover. So general electricity throughout the world would all of a sudden be widely wiped out and it would take years to restore. It's not as if we're living on farms where we don't have any electricity as they used to about 100, 150 years ago. Uh, they, people, most people were farmers, they had their own water supply, they had their own uh, way of uh, producing uh, their crops and raising their animals, their cattle, their farm animals, uh, and, and uh, they were basically self-sufficient. That's not the case today. We rely on everything having to do with electricity, our water, our transportation, our food storage, food production. Now, what about a solar revolution? The ecology's weather specialist Frank Binglesley says it could essentially shut down the industrial revolution. He's a chief meteorologist for KPRC TV2 in Houston, Texas. He says if so much of our technology and electrical systems along with the plants that supply them are shut down, then we are going to go back to the time of the Industrial Revolution. A CME setback in today's technological society to the scale of the early years of the Industrial Revolution might put us towards a solar revolution, Billingsley said, said that we may have to depend much more heavily on solar and wind energy as an extreme coronal mass ejection could knock out our immediate dependence on fossil fuels our primary source of power and electricity. But if we depended on the sun primarily and the CME hits, the relevant technology could likely just let us go back by, uh, to using solar energy the next day. Just knowing that such an occurrence is possible and certainly probable at some point in the future, it's just a matter of time, should make society rethink how to best prepare for the advent of a massive CME by looking even more seriously at the use of solar and other renewable energy at a personal and industrial level, according to Billingsley. He says it's easier said than done, but also quite possible and a certain path to the future. Though the probability may be low that a massive human life-altering CME will hit the Earth directly, it has happened in the past, as well as there have been numerous near-misses 
Now, will this, while the sun constantly radiates its electricity, electrically charged solar wind in all directions, the CMEs are single creations of solar activity that are jettisoned and spit out in one direction. From that perspective, Earth is but a small dot in the massive universe millions of miles away. So the chances that a CME would head precisely in Earth's direction is mathematically low. The downside to that is the sun generates a lot of them, and sometimes they are massive and they do connect. We had a major solar storm in the United States in 1859. September 2nd, 1859, the largest solar storm ever recorded propelled an intensive power CME directly at Earth. The CME from the solar storm of 1859, referred to as the solar storm, superstorm of 1859, created the most prolific auroras, the natural atmospheric lights generated by the interaction of Earth's magnetic field and the electromagnetically charged radiation from the sun, the northern lights that is, seen on the planet extended from both the north magnetic pole as far south as, you won't believe it, it they went as far south as Cuba, and the South Magnetic Pole as far north as Queensland, Australia. Unbelievable. But it also knocked out the leading technology of the day throughout all North America and Europe, the global telegraph system. The CME was so strong, it literally gave telegraph operators electric shocks and created auroras more brilliant than the moon. It was fortunate that technology was not really nearly as advanced and essential to human life then as it has been come today. The Industrial Revolution had only begun to take root in human society that would eventually pave the way for today's highly developed technology. In fact, the first electrical product producing utility companies would not be established until nearly 20 years later. But we have had recent near misses recently. In more recent history, July 23rd, 2012, the sun hurled a rapid succession of CMEs directly through Earth's orbit. According to scientist Dr. Ying Di Liu of China's State Key Laboratory Space Weather, the research and research physicist Janet Lumen of the University of California at Berkeley, this particular 2012 CME would have made a direct impact on Earth had the CME arrived nine days earlier. Can you imagine? So we were lucky. This, this CME was so powerful that it reached Earth's orbit in 19 hours instead of 72 hours. Should a CME of the magnitude of the one that erupted from solar storm of 1859 or the near miss of 2012 hit Earth head on today, modern civilization would be severely disrupted the technologies that essentially support and enable human life today would be fried by the immense solar force overwhelming the Earth's protective magnetic field. Earth's magnetosphere. Earth's magnetic shield against the CMEs. How does that work out? It's Earth's magnetic field that forms a protective cocoon called the magnetosphere that shields our planet from these high energy particles CMEs do not pose any direct threats to humans or ecology, rather their impacts can be felt in our high technology, says Dr. Newark. Although the planet's magnetic field protects Earth from harmful radiation, it's not strong enough to ward off the full intense electromagnetic impact of a massive solar CME. The magnetic field will continue to work, which is why you would see the brilliant northern and southern auroras, like those that appeared during the 1859 solar storm, about the same amount of solar energy would hit the planet as it did then. The difference is that today there is an extraordinarily advanced level of human technology and innovation that would be exposed and highly vulnerable to the power of just a massive CME. Earth generates its own shield with its magnetic field, says Dr. Weijia Huang, geophysicist and applied mathematician for NASA. When solar winds come to Earth, they will be deflected because of the magnetic field, causing the charged particles to move away from Earth. 
the magnetic field is the planet's primary shielding, not only from solar and wind, solar wind, the solar wind and the CME activity, but also from harmful cosmic rays and similar activity from interstellar rays as well. Hmm. But the strength of the Earth's magnetic field is relatively weak in general. Compared to a strong, common refrigerator magnet, the Earth's magnetic field would range from about 25 to 65 percent of the strength of the magnet. Stronger than the poles and weak in between the poles, still the magnetic field is currently strong enough to shield Earth from the regular occurrences of solar and related interstellar electromagnetic radiation. But Earth's magnetic field is currently weakening, this is according to Dr. Kuang. The magnetic field, he says, can only protect the Earth but so much. But he explains that the magnetic field has been weakening for about the last hundred years or so, indicating that a reversal of the magnetic poles may currently be in the making. It's during this time that the field is at its weakest point, when the last complete reversal took place before the development of human society. Scientists have determined Earth's magnetic field dropped to 5% of its current strength. Can you imagine? Only 5%. We see that from, according, let me go back to space weather. From space weather, I'll leave a link below for you. You can see at the bottom, uh, it has a stratospheric radiation uh, saying that our radiation has increased 18% in four years. It's because of the fact that our magnetic shield is weakening. That's why the radiation has increased 18%. Uh, why are cosmic rays intensifying, it says. The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds such as coronal mass ejection CMEs sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass the Earth during the solar maximum. CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays held at bay, but when the solar cycle is swinging towards minimum, as we have now, cosmic rays return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from uh, deep space radiation. In four years, we're talking about end of December 2014 until April 10th, 2018, it has uh, gone up, radiation has gone up 18%. That's astonishing. That's how quickly it's weakened, our magnetic field is weakening. So they say we may, we may drop down to 5% of its current strength. Dr. Kwong said the weakening of the field is a natural process, stating that Earth's magnetic poles typically take about 200,000 to 300,000 years to reverse or flip with each other, although it has been twice that long since the last reversal. If the field, she says, continue to, work, to weaken in time, we will see more and more disturbances or events that could be harmful to human activity, somewhere between disaster and disturbances. The weaker the field, the closer the shields get to us, and thus the more that electronic particles get to us, as we saw before. It weakened 18% more, 18 more radiation in four years. That's terrible. You can imagine what that means as far as human health and plant health and animal health as well. Now, can we get prepared? Will Earth be fine? The bottom line is, Earth's surface and life will generally not be directly affected by the massive CNE, by a massive CNE, CME, but the technology on which today's modern society is absolutely dependent could be devastated if one were to hit Earth head-on, especially if the magnetic field is in a weak state. But we can get prepared for what happens. Dr. Kwan says, just like an earthquake, we can create them, but if uh, we know when and where they will occur, we can pre take preventive action to reduce or eliminate damages and loss. NASA's Dr. Newman sums it up very plain terms. Earth has been around for four and a half billion years. CMEs have been hitting Earth for four and a half billion years. It's pretty safe to say the Earth itself would not care much, but humankind will care. The difference is in the technological infrastructure that dominates and sustains human life today. 
that some that same innovation can and should be used to protect mankind's technological society with the understanding of our exposure to the sun's most powerful threatening hold over our planet. Maybe long odds and maybe not, but very real. Now, we don't live in uh, what, for example, is a um, society such as the, uh, the Amish of Pennsylvania that do not have any uh, electrical appliances, they have no electricity, they live uh, off the land, and they have nothing to worry about in, effect, in, in the event of a CME strike head-on because they're already so close to the land. And that's the reason why they're so close, because they don't want to be dependent on that. They say that that, at one point in time, can be our devastation. And they're ready. They're, they would not have a problem, as the rest of society would have a problem. And maybe that's uh, one of the things that we could do, is have more societies like the Amish, who desire to live without electricity. Until then, what do we do to protect our infrastructure? That's a, that's a big question. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.